Today, we are going to the early 19th century. So sit back as we go to England. Loey Calvert was born Loey Gomesel on the 12th of January, 1895, in the small northern English market town of Osset in the county of Yorkshire. Her father was called Smith Gomesel and worked in the West Yorkshire wool industry, which was booming in the late 19th century. And her mother was named Annie, and she mainly stayed at home to bring up her five children. When Loey was 16 years old, she first encountered the law when she was caught and prosecuted for stealing money. And then, a year later, she was caught again for stealing. This time, the magistrate sentenced her to a year in detention. In 1913, she left her parents' house, and like many young girls in Osset, she went to the nearby city of Leeds to try and take advantage of the far more abundant work opportunities available. At the time, women were one third of the workforce in Leeds, and Loey hoped that she could find a better life for herself in the city. Hope and reality, however, proved to be very different things, and instead of becoming established in work, in one of the many manufacturing companies that operated in the city, she drifted from job to job, and when there was no work available, she got an income by working as a prostitute. By 1916, Loey was pregnant, and gave birth to a daughter, who she named after her mother, Annie. Loey, however, was unmarried, and in no position to bring up a child, so the baby was taken back to Osset, where she was brought up by one of Loey's sisters. Loey liked to attend the local Salvation Army meetings, but she was always reluctant to use her real name, so would tell people that her name was Louise Jackson. Then in 1919, she gave birth for the second time, this time to a baby boy, who she named Kenneth. Again, she was in no financial position to raise a child, so took him back to Osset's to be looked after by her sister. Loey needed to find a position so she could keep herself but she knew that with two illegitimate children, it'd be very hard to find work and even more difficult to find a husband. In 1922, she answered an advertisement in a newspaper for a housekeeper to work for a 49-year-old man named John W. Frobisher. When she met him for the first time, she introduced herself as Mrs. Louise Jackson and after a short interview, was given the position of housekeeper. So now, aged 27, she had at last found herself a respectable position. On the 12th of July, 1922, a patrolling policeman was walking by the canal, very close to the house where Loey now worked. Suddenly, he saw something floating and thought it looked like it could be a body. He managed to bring it to the bank and sure enough, it was the body of a fully clothed man. But strangely, the man's boots were missing the policeman also noticed that the man had a wound on the back of his head. When the body was examined to find the cause of death, it was discovered that the man had a fractured skull and he was identified as Mr. John W. Frobisher from Mercy Street, Leeds. The police went to his house and thought it strange that he had not been reported missing. They were met there by a small, thin woman who introduced herself as Mrs. Louise Jackson the police suspected that she may have had something to do with the death, but at the inquest, the coroner returned a verdict of death by misadventure and stated that Mr. Frobisher had died by drowning. Loey continued to live in the house, but without any income, was unable to pay the rent, and eventually she was evicted. She had enjoyed working as a housekeeper, as she felt secure, so decided to look for another position. But for the next two years, she again drifted in and out of work. Then, in 1924, she obtained another position as a housekeeper, this time for a man named Mr Arthur Calvert, who lived at Seven Railway Place in Leeds. Arthur was a hard worker, but did not earn much money. He worked as a night watchman, but having a so-called housekeeper suited him, and he also let Loey bring her five-year-old son Kenneth to live with them in the house. It did not take long for Loey and Arthur to start having a relationship. And then shortly after, she informed him 
that she was pregnant. Arthur was poor, but he considered himself an honourable man. So in 1925, on a warm summer's day, Loie and Arthur were married. Unbeknown to Arthur, however, his wife was not actually pregnant. As time passed, Arthur started to wonder about the arrival of his child. When he asked his wife when the baby was due, she invented a story. She wrote a note, which she explained to her husband had been written by her sister. The note stated that her sister was ill and she would like Loie to come to Osset to stay with her until she's better. Loie said goodbye to her husband, but did not go to her sister's house. Instead, she traveled two miles to Amberley Road in Leeds and rented a room from a lady she knew called Mrs. Lily Waterhouse. Mrs. Waterhouse was 40 years old and considered by those who knew her to be a bit eccentric. Her husband had died the previous year and without her husband's income, she lived in pretty impoverished conditions. The two ladies agreed that Loey would not have to pay any rent, but instead would keep the house clean and tidy and prepare all the meals. This arrangement suited Loey, as it gave her time to try and resolve her poorly thought out plan. She may have deceived her husband into marrying her by telling him that she was pregnant, but somehow she had to produce a baby. Always resourceful, she placed an advert in a newspaper offering to adopt an unwanted newborn baby. At the time, there were very many young unmarried women who put their babies up for adoption. The advert was seen by a young girl and it was soon agreed that Loey would take the child and bring her up as her own. She then sent Arthur a telegram saying his daughter had been born and once they're out of hospital, they would be returning home. Although at first Mrs. Waterhouse was pleased when her friend Loey had suggested that she moved into her house. After a few weeks, their friendship started to go downhill. Loey did not keep to her side of the arrangement and never cleaned or cooked. And when she needed money, she started to pawn Mrs. Waterhouse's silverware. Mrs. Waterhouse decided that she had had enough of her friend taking advantage of her. So on Wednesday, the 31st of March, 1926, she went to the police station and told the police that Loey was stealing her belongings. Later that afternoon, there was a loud banging coming from Mrs. Waterhouse's property. A little while later, Loey left the house with the baby and a bag containing a few of her friend's possessions. As she was leaving, she was stopped by a neighbour named Mrs. Clayton, who asked Loey why so much noise had been coming from the house, to which Loey replied, it was noisy because she had been folding up the baby's cot, which had somehow broken. The neighbour then told Loey that she thought that she had heard Mrs. Waterhouse making strange noises, to which Loey replied, Yes, I have left her in the bed crying because I am leaving. Loey then walked to a tram stop and caught the tram back to Seven Railway Place, where she presented the baby girl to Arthur. Mrs. Waterhouse had arranged to return to the police station the same afternoon, to sign her complaint made against her friend Mrs. Loey Calvert. So when she never arrived, the police decided to pay her a visit. They went to Amberley Road, but despite knocking on the door very loudly, they received no answer. They did, however, manage to get the attention of some of the neighbours, who told the police that they had not seen Mrs. Waterhouse and that Mrs. Calvert had vacated the property. They also told the policemen about the strange noises coming from the house a few hours earlier the police decided to enter the property. And when they did, they realised that the inside was very unpleasant and the living conditions were extremely squalid. When they entered one of the bedrooms, they discovered Mrs Lily Waterhouse lying on the bed. She was dead. An investigation started. It had been noted that the deceased was found lying on the bed, fully clothed, but strangely, with her boots missing, the police suspected that she had been killed elsewhere and moved to the bedroom. The cause of death was strangulation. Despite the gruesome events of the previous day, in the early morning of Thursday, April the 1st, Loey took a large suitcase and returned to Amberley Road and started to pack the rest of her deceased friend's possessions. Before she left the house, she wrote a note claiming that the items had been given to her by Mrs Waterhouse. When the note was found, the police decided to visit 
Loey Calvert, so went to the house she shared with Arthur at Railway Place. It was now Thursday the 1st of April and the inspector was quite shocked as he was greeted by Loey as she was wearing Mrs Waterhouse's boots and scarf. The police searched the property and soon found the suitcase and other possessions that had belonged to the deceased. Loey Calvert was arrested and taken into police custody. 24 hours later, on Friday the 2nd of April 1926, she was charged with murder. She was taken to Armley Prison to await trial. The prosecution looked into her past and discovered that she had been implicated four years earlier in the death of a man named John W. Frobisher. This could not be used in evidence, but the similarities in the two deaths were obvious. In both cases she had lived in the same house, and he was also found without his boots, which was very interesting to the authorities. The trial opened in Leeds on the 6th of May 1926, and it only lasted for two days, and Loey Calvert was found guilty of the murder of Mrs Lily Waterhouse. The judge sentenced her to death. She was taken to Strangeways Prison in Manchester to await her punishment. In her usual resourceful way, she had her execution date delayed by telling the court that she was in the very early stages of pregnancy. While the execution was delayed, there were calls to get her sentence commuted. A petition started in Osset, which had the backing of some members of Parliament and was signed by over 3,000 people. However, the court's decision was not overruled. Before going to the gallows, Loey decided to write her story. She confessed to the murder of John Frobisher in 1922, but did not confess to the crime against Mrs Lily Waterhouse. Instead, she said that she had died when she was hit by a poker in a fight. As Loey was trying to hit a man they had met named Frederick Crabtree, who was attacking her friend, and in the quarrel she accidentally struck Lily. However, before the trial, the police had already traced and spoken to Frederick Crabtree, and had also found a witness who saw him leave the house on the same day, but neither Mr Crabtree or the neighbour were called as a witness in Loey's trial. Loey's last request was to see her son, and this was granted, so her husband Arthur took him to the prison to see his mother for one last time. On the 24th of June, 1926, Loey Calvert was hanged. Following her execution, her six-year-old son, Kenneth, was taken into care. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for listening. As per usual, please leave any comments or feedback you may have, and I will see you in the next brief case.